Hey, so today um, I'm going to walk you through some some of the process into making an iron casting with a foundry pattern and how we make that pattern, how we design it, and then how we ultimately CNC it, machine it, and then be able to use that to make an iron casting. So what we're going to do as an example is this Avery steam engine lug. This is a, a lug for an extension rim. This is a project for my buddy Chris Jowett, a project he's working on building some extension rims for Undermount Avery steam engine. And um, so he, he gave me this original lug and we need to cast a, a whole bunch of them so they can build some extensions. And so what, what I've done is I've modeled this lug into 3D CAD in SolidWorks. We use SolidWorks. There's a number of different platforms for doing 3D CAD models, but I've got it modeled into SolidWorks and then I'm going to go through the process of making a pattern, designing the pattern that we're going to cut on a CNC machine using the CAM software that we're going to program it with and then we'll see it being made in the foundry using the pattern and the finished castings. So stand by. All right, so we're gonna start out with the CAD model itself. So I showed you the original lug and what I did with that lug was I just took some uh, measurements off of it. This is a fairly fairly simple 3D CAD model to, to make up. So I mean, we've, got a, we've just got a, a sketch of essentially the dimensional side profile of this lug and you can see there's a little bit of a radius which matches that lug up to the to the wheel um, and then the profile of that lug which we extrude to the distance which is nine and three quarter and then we've got a couple holes to pop in there these holes we're going to cast in so I've got them drafted so that they'll pull so that the sand mold will pull up from that hole and then we've got some fillets just to help help uh, maintain the sand integrity as we're molding. And again, draft on the sides, and then some more fillets. And so this is this is the CAD model of the casting itself. And you can see if we, you know, we can make it look pretty much like a casting just just in our 3D model here. So a, a pretty good idea of what this casting is going to look like after we get it made. Next, I've already designed this configuration for our pattern. In order to make a casting in the foundry, we have to have a pattern. The pattern essentially is, is what creates an impression in that sand, and then the sand is, is separated into a top and a bottom half. We call the cope, the top side, the drag, the bottom side. And so these two sections are, are our sand mold, which um, are made from impressions that the pattern leaves. So we'll, we'll have a pattern that's on a board, and then we'll have a flask that will go on the top and bottom to make the cope and drag molds. We'll fill those flasks with sand. We'll pull, pull the pattern out. We'll have two, two cope and drag halves with the cavity left from the, the mold. We put those two back together without the pattern inside, and we're just left with the sand mold and the cavity. In that, we pour the iron, and then out comes the casting. Okay, so now what we're looking at right here, this is the actual match plate pattern to make this casting. So as you remember, we have the, the casting from this casting, I've designed a pattern and we want, we need to make a number of these lugs, about 140 of them. So that means we don't wanna run one at a time. We don't wanna take all the time to run to make the time it takes to make one mold and to get one casting, it gets really expensive because the amount of labor and time and effort it takes to make that mold, you want to you want to optimize that by having as many as many castings come out of that mold as possible, um, and and while weighing the cost of the tooling uh, at the same time. So this part we're going to run in green sand. So our, our green sand line we can we can pour up to 50, 60 pounds. This is a this is about a six pound casting. So we're gonna run three lugs on a green sand match plate. And so we're gonna have 18 pounds of casting when you add in the gating and risers, probably about 25, 28 pounds of, of pour weight. And so what we're looking at right now is the pattern, which, which we have scaled already for shrink. So a casting shrinks an eighth of an inch per foot when, when the iron from the, the impression the pattern makes when that casting cools down 
it'll shrink an eighth of an inch per foot. So our pattern needs to be scaled up an eighth of an inch per foot. So I've got the casting model designed into a pattern, scaled up an eighth of an inch per foot. And then I've also got here three on, three patterns, and then what you see in red here, this is a gate. So you're, you're kind of seeing how the iron is gonna flow into this part. So this, this uh, is the drag or the bottom side of the mold. So this is where, this will be where our cast, most of our cast iron is. And so if you look at the top side, you'll see what we call the runner bar and, the, and we'll, we'll pop a down sprue on to, directly onto that runner bar. Um, sometimes we'll, uh, bigger molds, bigger castings, uh, stuff will we'll run it through a filter block, but something that's, that's pretty simple like a lug, we're just gonna pop a down sprue, run the iron directly into that runner, and, uh, and then it'll flow in f from the runner. Iron, the iron will come in through the mold, through the runner bar, fill this runner bar, and then the iron will come down through the runner into these three gates, through the gates in to and fill the casting. These uh, other red sections you can see here, these are just some mold locks that I've designed in. Um, this is this is a, on the drag side. The cope side is gonna. This is gonna. This is gonna be filled with sand, and so there will be a little. There will be a little tab essentially that comes down, that's filled with sand. And then um, on the drag side, it will be an it will be a cavity, and so so if you can imagine the the bottom half of the mold and the top half of the mold, when when this comes together, it essentially will lock it, is, it essentially will lock together like that. So that's that's what we call a mold lock, and that that is to prevent shift in the casting. Um, this particular casting doesn't have much on the cope side except for this curve because the, uh, the lug itself is curved to fit the wheel. So if we look at this, there's a little curve, there's a little curve in this profile which, which, is, which is shaped so that the lug fits the radius of the wheel nice. And so this we're gonna make in the cope side and that's why I've got, um, that's why I have mold locks in there just to, just to lock this this, uh, I'm gonna change the transparency of this board. Not that face, but the board itself. So you can kind of see. So this, this curve will be made in the cope, and then that will provide the curve on the, on the bottom of the, the lug. So again, if we just just walk through this one more time. So this is this is going to be our cope side. Iron iron is going to come down and fill this runner bar. This runner bar will fill across, and then it's going to drop iron down through our runner into these three gates. From the gates, the iron is going to run into the casting, which will be upside down like this when it fills, and it'll fill from the gate across. These mold locks or just, just to lock the mold together. Now you probably notice a couple other features on this. Um, there's a cutout here. These cutouts are just for handles. These handles we, we will screw onto the mold and the handle will have a, a little um, angle iron that, that'll help, that'll, that'll line up with, with angle irons on our flask to, to just guide, guide the two cope and drag molds together when we have our flasks. To help help them get them locked together accurately, so that's that's for a handle. Um, and then you can notice these these holes. We're going to talk about the purpose of them when we get into the cam programming. Um, the point of that is to to be able to hold it as we're machining it. So that is the design of the pattern itself. And now we'll go into the machining. So for the machining. We use a program called SolidCam. It's integrated directly into SolidWorks. So as you can see, I'm still in SolidWorks. I just switched over to, to our SolidCam option. And I've already wrote the programs for this. It took me probably 20 minutes to write, write all the, the CAM programs for this. Um, and what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is take off this runner bar because uh, this is 
this is something that we just we're just gonna cut this out of a piece of wood and screw it on after so that's not something we're gonna machine on um, and this feature as well is not part of that so in our cam programming the the first thing we're doing is we're gonna start machining the cope side so the cope side of this part has got the mold lock impression the mold lock um, tab section here on each side which we're gonna cut in and then it'll be the radius of of the back side of this cast lug so these are the features that we're gonna that we're gonna cut in on the cope side and then these holes I'm drilling and tapping simply to hold the this pattern after I after I face mill and machine all the features on the cope I'm gonna I'm gonna drill and tap these holes and then I'm gonna make a fixture that that I just screw this this board to and then flip it over so that so that I can machine all the features on the drag side and so the the screw holes that you see there are just to mount this to a fixture after I've machined the, the cope side then I'm gonna machine all the features on the drag side and that's gonna that's gonna be how I hold it and it's just the easiest easiest way to do it keep it simple that's what we try to do here so we're gonna look through these features machining features so the first thing we're gonna do this is gonna this is gonna start off as just a just a solid block of wood so what what, what we're starting off with is basically a three inch solid block 19 19 by 19 roughly three inches thick and so this is gonna be a solid block and I can show this um, in transparent so we can kind of see we can kind of see what we're starting with but um, the first thing we're gonna do machining the cope side is we're gonna run the face mill across so I have a I have a face milling operation here um, I'm not gonna go into so much detail on the cam programming but just kind of go through the basics so we have a geometry which which I've selected selected the face that I want to face mill I've got my tool selected. Um, my tool is my tool is a three-inch diameter face mill, and then you can uh, you can see my whole tool table here. Uh, Ten different tools that that we use. We're only going to use about four of them on this this project, but we're going to mill this off with the three-inch face mill, and then you can see here's the speeds and feeds: 2,800 RPM, 85 uh, surface feet per minute feed. And our level is we're just going to make one pass. So I've just got that face mill starting a hundred thousandths over the stock material and going to the to the face depth. And the technology is just is just a hatch. We're just going to run just run a path down, move over, come back, and just hatch our way all the way across the face of that. And so pretty straightforward. You can see you can see the tool path we're coming down. It's going to run over hatch hatch its way across this and we're just going to face the, the top of that wood block off so that we have a, a really nice flat surface for that face. The next operation is going to be machining this contour which is the radius of the back side of this lug. So you can see you can see the tool paths here <clears throat> and what we're what we're machining that with I'm using a I'm using a quarter inch end mill <clears throat> with a 60 thousandths uh, radius in the corner. So this is, the geometry is the target, or our, the, the target is, is the CAD model of, of the parts that we want to machine. So we can just show the target targets here. That's, that's what we're trying to machine. The tool is a bull nose, 60 thou corner radius, quarter inch end mill, and I'm running 3,500 RPM, 100, 160 feet per minute. Um, feed so we're, we're moving right along with this part with this uh, tool when we're cutting and then the constraint boundaries I have defined to the the perimeter of, of this piece because I don't want it I don't need to machine anything out here because this is just faced off we already faced it off there's nothing else to machine I don't want it running around out there I want to just stay in the, in the perimeter so so I've designed I've designed in some boundaries the passes are starting at basically the top surface and we're just going to machine 
the, the depth as far as we can into, into following that CAD geometry. And so that's, that's showing the tool path for this quarter inch end mill and then we're gonna do the same exact same process except we're just we're just machining out this cavity for our mold locks on each side so it's it's literally a copied copied program from the first one all I did was change change my perimeter um, geometry and the target that I'm machining okay and then we've then we can go in here and look at the the tap drill operation so I've got the geometry is my all my drilled holes so it's starting starting here bang 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 going all the way across 12 holes and then we're running a, uh, a drill 201 thousandths tap drill size for a quarter quarter inch uh, thread and we're going to just drill down 850 thousandths and so that's that's the drill operation you can see the you can see the steps we're going to peck or peck drilling so it's about about four pecks um, you know a little under a quarter inch each peck and we're pecking our way down down through there then we've got a tap operation this tapping is going to be the same dr g drill geometry this is a quarter 20 tap and we're just tapping 650 thousandths deep so then we're going to follow the tap operation so <clears throat> we can simulate this and just kind of see what what this is going to look like so if we just run a simulation slow it down a little bit here you can see it it ran pretty fast already so it's so it's already ran the face mill um, and now it's going to just really really run through the milling of the of the back side of this of this lug which is going to create those contours And now we're now we're cutting out this contour in here for the mold lock. And then the other mold lock contour. Wanna to try to catch that drill and tap. So there's the drill and the tap. It, it, I know it ran pretty quick, but it just popped in in the holes, drill, and then the tap came through. So that's just a that's a quick simulation. This is this is actually a beta simulation. This is something new in Solid Cam. That's just a real real quick way to run a simulation to see see how things are looking. Um, so yeah, so that's that's machining the cope side. Once we have the cope side machined, like I said, I'm gonna. I'm going to run a, a drill and a countersink operation and a fixture. We're going to screw this this block, which will be still be this about roughly three inches thick. I'm going to screw this block with the machined cavities to a fixture. Then we're going to flip this whole thing over, and we're going to have us. It's going to be a solid block, so this is all going to be solid sitting on a sitting on a fixture, and then we're going to machine the top side. So if we go in, I'm just going to synchronize and calculate quick the, uh, the programs for this drag side. So as we're machining the drag, what we're going to be using here again is that quarter inch. Um, we're going we're gonna to rough it down with a three quarter inch end mill. And then we're going to finish it with that quarter inch corner radius, 60 thou corner radius end mill. The reason we use the reason I like to use a corner radius end mill instead of a ball radius end mill is you know we have a lot of flat we have a lot of flat features that we have to machine and and uh, it's difficult to machine the flat features with with obviously with a ball nose although you need you need to have the radius of a tool so you either need a ball nose or a or a corner radius to get a nice 
to get a nice finish as you're stepping down because if you just had a square cornered sharp angled end mill as you're machining these 3d profiles you would you would end up with a lot of stair step scalloped edge and it wouldn't it wouldn't be a nice smooth smooth finish so when we go to machine the drag side of this pattern i've got to set up another machine coordinate um, my, my work offset or part offset so my first one for the cope side was top top center which would be my g54 for uh, setting up in the cnc machine g54 would be top center so you got the center of this part is center Y, center X, and then the top face is, is zero uh, for Z. And so when I go to my drag side machining, I want the G54 on the bottom center. So the center of this part, X0, Y0 is the center, and Z0 is actually the bottom or the, of this face that we just machined on the cope side. So I've got a new machine coordinate and then the first operation we're going to do is a roughing operation. This operation we're going to do with a three quarter inch end mill. The geometry is going to be our target, which is the three pattern impressions plus the mold, two mold locks, the three gates, and, and the cavity for our handles. This tool is a three quarter inch end mill. Got constraint boundaries set up. My machining passes are all set up, so I'm starting. I'm starting at the top, two and seven eighths, my first pass, and then I'm machining down to seven seven hundred ninety thou down, um, which will take me down to the to the bottom of that handle. Climb milling, and so this is essentially we can look at all the tool paths to do this with this three quarter inch end mill. You can see all these tool paths. A lot of a lot of lines, a lot of tool paths there. And then after the three quarter inch, we're gonna run that quarter inch 60 thou corner radius end mill. Same same target geometry. Um, that quarter inch end mill we're cutting at 120 feet per minute, 300, 3500 RPM. And we're gonna we're gonna run this down 15 thou step down and in a 16 thou step over. So that means the end mill process will run, will step down each pass, will step down 15 thousandths, and it won't step over more than 16 thousandths. So that, that kind of defines our, our uh, finish um, so that we have a good, a good finish. So you can see the tool path here of, of that quarter inch. It's, uh, all it's doing is a finishing, so it's only working on the, the geometry itself. So let's take a look at the simulation of this drag machining program. Slow it down a little bit. So you can just see that three quarter inch end mill that's just roughing out Give me a couple messages that I don't care about. So we've got our, our shape roughed out. Now in's coming the, the quarter inch and it's taken down, finishing off all of these different features. So you can see it going down through these through these holes, machining machining the the tapered hole that we're gonna that we're gonna pull in, in the sand mold. You can kind of see the resemblance here of these gates, the mold locks, the handles. Now it's just facing, uh, essentially facing off the, the board to the right to the finish height. Finishing up that mold lock. Over here you can see the time. So if you kind of keep an eye on the time, we're, we're at about four hours cutting. Um, 
you know, this program's probably around six hours, just, just guessing. And uh, so we're finishing up that gate, finishing the top here of each, each of these patterns, just, just doing some final cleaning there. Then we'll have that other mold lock to finish. So now we've got this first pattern is, is all completely machined. So we can see, we can see the finish of that. Uh, the second one's complete. So everything, everything looks pretty good there. And that's, that's the finish, finish part, what it's going to look like after, after we're all machined out. And so this is going to be made out of, like I said, three inch solid piece of wood. We're just going to machine the cope side, flip it over, mount it to a fixture, machine the whole top, um, which will be this side, which will be the drag side. We're ready to throw on the handles and start making castings. <laughs> 